Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Sipsy, and as always, I have the outstanding pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Shipman. How are you today, Matt? I am good, Brian. We've got our third Breeders' Cup preview with the Breeders' Cup just two days away. Yeah. I, hey, by my count, this is our fourth, but this is the big preview. This is the this is the one that really counts. It's also our 11th year of previewing the Breeders' Cup on Horse Center. How about that? Uh, that's pretty amazing, Brian. Uh, 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 a lot of people try, but we keep on going. We keep on going. Hey, let's go straight to the classic, the big one. $7 million, Matt. This is going to be race eight on Saturday, a mile and a quarter, of course, on Del Mar's main track. This is about 2.41 post time. Pacific time, 541 Eastern. We have a field of 14, Matt. Starting from the rail, I like the horse on the rail. Six to one morning line odds on Forever Young. That's not bad. Yeah, I, I don't know if we're going to get six to one odds on, on that horse, Brian, but we shall see. I know you like him a lot. He's got to be considered uh, one of the top three contenders uh, in this field. Yeah, the good news is, Matt, with 14 horses, I think – there's going to be pretty good odds on a lot of horses. Uh, Forever Young, very consistent. His only loss was an unlucky third by a head in the Kentucky Derby with trouble. He was freshened from a trainer who's uh, been big in Japan and has come over here and won at the Breeders' Cup before. Mile and a quarter proven. I think he has enough tactical speed to be a little closer than he was in the Kentucky Derby. The rail draw, maybe not ideal, but it's all about uh, a little bit of racing luck. I do like Forever Young. Number two, Highland Falls ran a good race last time in the Jockey Club Gold Cup. Yeah, you're not going to get into this field, Brian, unless you've got some good races showing in, in your past performances and showing pretty recently. And for Highland Falls, for Brad Cox, and I'll tell you, Brian, uh, uh, ignore Brad Cox at your own peril, not specifically in the Classic, but in the Breeders' Cup, because he is just absolutely uh, on a remarkable run in stakes races uh, in the past month, winning at an um, unbelievable rate of close to uh, 80%. Yeah, Brad Cox is red hot for sure. I don't pay as much attention necessarily to the trainer's uh, heat test, in a big 14 horse field like the Breeders' Cup Classic or a 20 horse field of the Kentucky Derby, per se. But uh, Highland Falls, a horse who kind of looked like he was getting very good, uh, hasn't quite proven it at the best. Certainly uh, a tougher test than the Jockey Club, but that Jockey Club out of mile and a quarter. Good performance last time. Number three, City of Troy. Matt, I think he's the best turf horse in the world as a three year old son of Justified. But will he be a dirt horse on Saturday? Don't know, Brian, uh, um, but uh, if you want to go on past performances for his uh, trainer, Aiden O'Brien, Aiden O'Brien is zero for 18 over the years with runners in the Classic. Now, I don't know. Maybe this is the best one that he has sent over, but, uh, you know, uh, as, our, uh, uh, as one of the greats, uh, Harvey Pack, said, uh, many years ago, don't bet a favorite that's trying to do something for the first time. And and certainly running on the dirt in a race like the Classic, that's the first time. Yeah, he's he's an outstanding horse. So Brian has been high on him all along, maybe a little bit too high considering the horses he's had training in the past and some of the horses he's brought over to the Breeders' Cup. And he's been close in the Classic before. Uh, he's been trying this Classic for uh, more than two decades now. City of Troy, uh, Galileo side on the female, which is very turfy. Justify is his sire, uh, which gives them hope. But uh, City of Troy, like you said, trying something completely new here in the Breeders' Cup Classic. Certainly a mile and a quarter will be up his alley. But will the dirt, will the kick be up his alley? Number four is Mixto, Matt. And Mixto has a win, a grade one win, at a mile and a quarter at Del Mar. That's something. That's something. He was 22 to 1 in that race when he won Brian, probably for good reason. And I'll tell you what, he's going to be way more than 22 to 1 in this race. 
Yeah, as much as I like, I think this is a wide open race. For Forever Young probably is my top. It is my top pick in here. But I think it's a wide open race. And and you have to consider horses that have some odds in here in a wide open race. And Mixto's one of them. I like a mile and a quarter at Del Mar. But on the other hand, I thought that Pacific Classic just was an awful addition, unfortunately, for Mixto. So he won't be on my tickets. But uh, I, I, I could see an upset for sure in this Classic. Number five is Senor Buscador, who's pulled off upsets before, including the Saudi Cup earlier this year, Matt. I don't love his recent form, though. No, but his form earlier in the year, on that form, uh, he he was fantastic with a second in the Pegasus World Cup, a win in the Saudi Cup, and then a third in the Dubai World Cup. But yeah, his last two races in graded stakes in California have just not been up to snuff. Yeah, not up to snuff, and um, I still wonder if he can win a big race like this in America going a mile and a quarter. Last year, he was seventh in the Breeders' Cup Classic at Santa Anita. Derma Sotogaki was much better than that in the Breeders' Cup Classic last year. In fact, he was second as a three-year-old from Japan. Uh, this year, again, another horse who you got to wonder about the form. Maybe they're you know, really just prepping and pointing for this race. But still, his races this year have, have left something to be desired for sure. They have, Brian. Uh, yep, he was second in the Classic last year. He won the UAE Derby last year, but uh, hasn't got anything in his past performances like that for this year. Yeah, let's take a look, a quick look at the Time Forum U.S. pace projector now, Matt. Uh, interesting to me, because I'm of the belief that there's one true speed horse in this race and then several others who could show some speed. Interesting to me that Dermasotagaki and Fierceness, uh, the six and the nine, are considered right there on a fast pace, while the 12, Arthur's Ride, the horse I think will be on the lead, is, is the third of three. I, do you see Dermasotagaki and Fierceness on the lead? Well, I don't know about Dermot Sotogaki. I don't know about most of these uh, Japanese horses, Brian, quite frankly. Uh, but uh, about fierceness, no, I don't see fierceness. And and, and this uh, uh, and this pace projector has fierceness on the lead. I think clearly they want fierceness to break alertly. They want him to get that get clear of most of the field. But but I don't think. They have uh, any attention of knocking heads early on with Arthur's ride. Yeah, so we are in agreement, and uh, it's a little different than we're seeing on this pace projector, where they're saying fast pace with perhaps the Japanese Derma Sotogaki, Fierceness, and Arthur's ride contesting it. We both seem to agree that it'll be Arthur's ride out on the lead with Fierceness looking for good position, maybe Derma Sotogaki as well. Um, you never know with the Japanese shippers. And, and the next Japanese shipper, the third Japanese horse we're talking about already, the number seven, uh, Ushba Tesoro, Matt, a good horse who won the Dubai World Cup last year. Uh, in, in fact, he is uh, uh, eight of 13 in his career on dirt, proven at a mile and a quarter. You see him near the other end of the spectrum back there, uh, well off the pace. Uh, it, if it is indeed fast and it's contested, like the time form U.S. best pace projector saying, Horses like Ushba Tesoro could be at an advantage at a mile and a quarter. Yeah, that would certainly suit him. Man, Brian, he has won a heck of a lot of money in his career, uh, uh, $16.4 million, and, and has you know earned a good chunk of that in races outside of Japan. Yeah, outside of Japan and specifically uh, in the Middle East, uh, the Dubai World Cup, for instance, has been very good to Ushba Tesoro, a mile and a quarter race. He was fifth, a decent fifth last year. Uh, we wonder a little bit about the stretch at Del Mar. It's a little shorter than some, and uh, that could play against horses like Ushba Tesoro on Saturday in the Classic. All right, we're halfway through here, Matt. Number eight, Pyrenees got in. Brian Hernandez, Jr., uh, Pyrenees has been a nice horse. He's been first or second in six consecutive races, Matt. Um, a horse who has gotten better throughout his career. He's got a little bit of tactical speed. He's run a mile and a quarter. Well beaten second last time in the Jockey Club Gold Cup. Can we really expect him to be a true factor in this race? 
Uh, probably not, Brian. And that was not the uh, uh, best uh, ru- best field in a Jockeys Club Gold Cup uh, uh, recently. Uh, uh, trained by Sherry, Cherie DeVoe, who is out on her own and, and really, really doing quite well. Just after a couple of years, she, of course, was an assistant for Chad Brown for many, many years. Yeah, she has five or six horses running in the Breeders' Cup now, and uh, she's loaded. Uh, this one will be one of her bigger long shots, though. Pyrenees, the number eight. Again, a nice horse, but uh, so many others to like, including number nine, Fierceness. Fierceness, of course, the two-year-old champion of last year when he came out west and won the Breeders' Cup Juvenile impressively. Fierceness has been a little bit in and out this year, including the mile and quarter Kentucky Derby, but he fully turned things around with a game victory. In what I call the race of the year, the Grade One Travers going a mile and a quarter at Saratoga. Yep, and that and, and uh, at Saratoga he seemed to really uh, be be doing extremely well. Maybe has turned the corner on some of his inconsistencies in the past, as he did put two really nice victories together uh, at the summer meet at Saratoga. Yeah, he's been perfect at Saratoga. He's been perfect. When he's going out to Southern California, although that is only uh, a set of one so far, but he'll get another chance. I wonder about 10 furlongs, if that's his best distance. I do agree with you. As we said, Johnny Velasquez, I think, wants to relax him a little bit early. Comfortable stalking position, probably behind Arthur's ride, similar to the trip that he worked out so well in winning the Travers. Number 10, another horse that you can't completely discount. Irad Ortiz Jr. is going to hop aboard Tapit Trice, who is 2 of 3 uh, this year and closed with a rush to get by Skippy Longstocking last time in the Woodward. Yep, and you mentioned uh, this race where a hot pace is anticipated. That certainly uh, uh, will be helpful to a horse that has flashed a lot of talent, began his career uh, uh uh, really impressively uh, had, you know, some ins and outs between then and now, but seems to be back on the top of his games here. Uh, and one of those horses that because we are in a field of 14 is going to come with really generous odds. Yeah. 30 to one uh, on the morning line surprised me a little bit. Uh, on the other hand, I'm not sure that Tapit Trice has ever shown me he can get it done against this class. But a talented horse who will be running late, who's been a mile and a quarter plenty of times, can't throw him out. Can't throw out number 11, Sierra Leone, and 12 to 1 on the morning line also seems generous on a horse who's always been bad. He's always run well. Um, unfortunately, he's been losing of late, but he's been running well while losing, including last time when he rallied for third, behind Fierceness and Torpedo Anna in the Trappers. Yeah, uh, and uh, 12 to 1 does seem like a generous price. And even if he is a little shorter than that, maybe at 8 to 1 or 10 to 1, we're talking about the highest odds that we have seen on Sierra Leone. I'm trying to remember, certainly recently, but maybe in his career. Yeah, in his career, that would be true. And uh, even 8 to 1, I'm not sure what we're going to see on Saturday, Sierra Leone. Uh, should be coming as he always does. And the faster the pace, probably the better for Sierra Leone. He sure looks good uh, as he's filling out and maturing now as a three-year-old in the fall of his season, working up to the Breeders' Cup Classic. I already mentioned that I think there is a little issue with the time form U.S. pace projector because I really do think, due to horses that are not in this field, Arthur's Ride is the one true speed horse in the race. If you can draw a line through the jockey club, yeah, I know. Why would I weed you draw a line through? But if you can, the races preceding the jockey club gold cup, where he faded to fifth, were very good, including the grade one Whitney, of course. And before that, a mile and a quarter tour de force allowance win, a mile and a quarter tour de force allowance win at Saratoga. I think if Arthur's ride is giving any uh rope at all in other words they let him go along for the first half mile with little pressure and maybe that's fierceness sitting off him a little bit uh it doesn't always happen in a field of 14 but i think arthur's ride becomes very dangerous well uh you know i look at it this way brian Uh, um arthur's ride when he has been successful and, and 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 not thinking particularly about the rest of the horses in the field 
that has been when he has gone to the lead, stayed there all the way around. So you got to believe that's what the connections want to do. So he's going to try and go to the lead and, and stay there the rest of the way. Now, uh, we're talking about the Breeders' Cup Classic, and, and certainly he's never done it in a field like this or, or run in a field like this, but that's probably true of most of the horses. Yeah, yeah. I, I, for me, it comes down to I think he's a very talented horse. Uh, I don't know if he's if he's the toughest horse in the world where if he's pressured, he's going to stick around very well. If it's 22 and change, 45 and horses are close to him, I, I, I don't really like his chances. But on the other hand, if he's able to run 47 and change, 48, and horses are not that close, then I think he becomes very dangerous. Uh, Arthur's ride, I think, is a real talent who could get the trip. If a couple jockeys decide, well, the best thing for my horse, like fierceness, is to sit just a little bit back and wait a little bit. So Arthur's right. I think he's one of the most dangerous horses in this race, actually. Other dangerous horses, number 13, Newgate. Uh, Newgate is a mile and a quarter winner out in so uh, Southern California in a grade one race. He also came back after a freshening very well last time with a good race in the California crown. Yep, absolutely. A third, a close, close third by a head and a blanket finish in uh, newly named California Crown. Before that, um, he was ninth in the Dubai World Cup, uh, seeing a Baffert runner in the Classic at 20 to 1, uh, a little unusual. Yeah, and I think he is a little bit interesting, at least. He's, he's always been a good horse who seems to be developing now as a four year old and into mischief. Um, He's got home field advantage, freshened, kind of like uh, Forever Young over in Japan was freshened, and he came back with a nice prep for this. Newgate, Frankie Dettori, certainly a jockey who can get the most out of a horse going 10 furlongs. 14, another wild card. There's a few wild cards in this race, but next certainly is one of the biggest wild cards in the race. Only 8-1 to one on the morning line, and that's because in four races this year, he has destroyed his competition. Yes, and he's got a, a win streak of seven races going back to last year since he went to long distance races. And and in that definition, that does not include a mile and a quarter race. Long distance races at distances more than a mile and a quarter, more like a mile and a half and more. Uh, he is in a league of his own. Um, certainly, I'm not sure about the eight to one morning line odds. Those odds are too short for me. I am a huge fan of Next. I'm a huge fan of what he has done in those long distance races and seeing those long distance races. But I just have echoing in my head what his trainer, Doug uh, Cowan, said after his victory in the Greenwood at uh, Philadelphia Park on the uh, 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 on the Pennsylvania Derby day, uh, his, he, he was very, very concerned about the prospect of going in the classic at a shorter distance with a much, much faster pace. I just don't think this is a great fit for a horse that I have tons of respect for. Yeah, no, I, I'm a big fan of next for a while, uh, as well. And I have been for a while, Matt, and I love what he's been doing at a distance. Uh, he did do a mile and three eighths very successfully uh, earlier this year in the Brooklyn and, and and did it easily. But again, that was like we said, a, a slower pace. All of his races, he's right there in a slower pace. I put the time form U.S. pace projector up one more time just to show you how far they're projecting next to be off the lead this time, based on what he's done uh, fractionally in those races before. He, I, I certainly could see him closer than this, but a whole different pace, a whole different level of competition for next. Next has not faced the likes of the, this kind of field, of course, in those longer races, but he's doing it so easily, so impressively. He's finishing his races so well. You have to consider him at least in, in the 14 hole. I guess he'll run a little bit more than a mile and a quarter. So I don't know. Maybe that's a good thing. He'll get a little bit more distance running from the 14 hole. All right, Matt, that's the classic. Let's look at another race we identified as, as a race of the week this week, and we could have picked a lot of ones, but we went with the juvenile for a lot of reasons. Juvenile's Friday, of course. 
uh, the juvenile offers us a look at horses we're going to be talking about on the classic road. And I think this field has the potential to, to, to be uh, showcasing horses that we're going to be talking about next spring because this is a good looking young field here in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. It's race nine on Friday, mile and 16th. $2 million. And uh, if we start on the rail, we're going to start with the favorite East Avenue, a big strapping son of Medagliadoro, Matt. He's done as he's pleased in his first two races. Yes, he has uh, for uh, trainer Brendan Walsh. He's got a maiden victory and then a very impressive win by more than five lengths in the breeder's futurity. One of the uh, uh, most important grade one uh, races beyond a mile distance uh, so far this year. Yeah, he, he's been two turns. Not everybody in this field, including some of the other favorites, can say that. East Avenue, very impressive at Ellis Park, very impressive at Keeneland, where it was a, a very speed favoring track when he ran. Um, he, he was pushed for the early lead, and when he got it, the race was pretty much over in the Breeders' Futurity at Keeneland. Uh, he breaks from the rail here with speed right next to him, so I think they might have to push him early again and try to do it wire to wire. We'll see. I I, I, I I worry a little bit about the odds. He already looks like an older horse physically. East Avenue could be the one to beat in here. Number two, getaway car, one of three from trainer Bob Baffert. He's shown quite a bit of speed in his career. They tried to rate him a little bit in the American Pharaoh. It didn't uh, necessarily work for the son of, uh, son of Curlin that day. But uh, I, I think they'll let him roll a little bit more early here in the British Cup Juvenile. Yeah, three for Bob, Bob Baffert in the Juvenile. And, and interestingly, uh, uh, the shortest odds of that trio is eight to one. Yeah, they've all won great at six in Southern California. So uh, while the Eastern horses, I think, have been more uh impressive looking visually in in their wins in kentucky and uh in, in new york uh i i wouldn't throw out the california horses getaway car might be the one that shows the most speed of the three early here uh number three is going to be a long shot this is an irish uh horse uh, hill road he's actually a, a son of quality road who we're very familiar with uh but in two races in ireland he broke his maiden easily in his debut and then he ran near the back of the field in a group one over in Ireland on the turf, of course. Yeah, sure. Surely a tough ask and a legitimate long shot. I was a little surprised to see Ferocious uh, quite so low on the morning line. I know he's been bet in his whole career. The son of Flatter has uh, a very expensive two-year-old in training purchase this year. Ferocious was a big debut winner, but then was beaten last two races by both Chancellor McPatrick in the hopeful and then East Avenue in the Breeders' Futurity. He did have an excuse in both of those races. I guess he's dangerous here. Six to one, I'm not loving those odds, though, on a horse that's been beaten by two horses in the race already. Yeah, no, I'm not. Uh, I don't like those odds either, and I don't know if they will uh happen considering the Bafferts that we have in here but like you said uh, second behind the top two cha top two choices in the field and, and didn't get the best of trips in those races no no he did have a, a reasonable excuse both days in the hopeful and the breeders futurity number five is jonathan's way let's go back to the time form u.s space projector real quick uh, a lot of speed in this field, and, and they're actually saying that it's Jonathan's way that will be out there with East Avenue, uh, two of the favorites here. Uh, Jonathan's way has, it, it's been an interesting two-race career so far for Jonathan's way, in that he he was really bothered in his debut, six furlongs at Saratoga, and after that, he just circled the field and won for fun. Then in the Iroquois, no problems out of the gate and he went right to the lead and beat a very nice horse owen almighty rather easily going one turn one mile at churchill downs yeah an another horse off to a great start in their career and these days that's what makes uh handicapping these kind of big juvenile races a little tough because we're talking about horses that basically almost all of them just have two races in their careers yeah, a, a bunch are coming in with only two, including Jonathan's Way and East Avenue. I will take a little exception here. I, I do think there'll be horses forwardly placed, but I, I would suspect that maybe the two getaway car is the main 
uh, threat to East Avenue's early lead in this Breeders' Cup Juvenile. I, I, I think uh, Jonathan's way might sit a stalking trip from the, the middle of the pack uh, in his post position here in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. Matt, number six is another Baffert. Let's start talking more about the Bafferts here. Six is Citizen Bull. Citizen Bull is the only two-turn uh, uh, graded stakes winner for Baffert in the field. Uh, Citizen's Bull has had three starts. He's won two or three. He was beaten by his stable mate in the second race, but then he looked good stretching out. Kind of like the fact that he has a two-turn win out in Southern California under his belt. Yeah, that certainly uh, is important uh, going into the Breeders' Cup and this two-turn race. Uh, so maybe, uh, uh, you know, he, he maybe he's the Baffert that I like best. Okay, number seven is gaming another Baffert, a game winner. Uh, is his sire. Irad Ortiz Jr. will ride gaming here, and game gaming is two for two. Uh, those came at six and a half furlongs and seven and seven furlongs. So obviously one turn in both of them, but they both did come at Del Mar, and in the Del Mar Futurity, he beat uh, several of California's best two-year-olds, including Citizen Bull. Yeah, uh, um, and another one that's two for two. I don't know, Brian. I can't recall off the top of my head um, uh, seeing Irad riding for Baffert in a big uh, in a big race like that. But hey, anytime you can get Irad uh, up uh, in a big race uh, gives you an edge. Yeah, it, it'll be interesting to see where Citizen Bull and Gaming are early as well. A pace projector had them relatively close. Uh, number eight is Shin Believe. Um, if you're a believer, you're going to get some double digit odds, I think, on this Japanese runner. He's only had one start. Very impressive win. He's a Kentucky bred son of Constitution, one by five lengths going going the distance out there in Japan. But that was one race, and it was in August. Uh, yeah, and the, the thing that I can say about both of the Japanese horses in this field is that in their maiden victories, they beat big, big fields, fields that had 14, 15 horses in them, as opposed to uh, the Americans. Yeah, Shin Believes ran in a field that included 15 horses. He was the favorite in his debut, and he won very easily. So Shin Believe might be a horse uh, that we're talking about for, for years to come here, but with only one race, a, a tough spot for sure. The other Japanese is right outside of Mikoro Ezel. Um, like you said, beat a big field in his debut, then came back in a stakes race and was pretty well beaten by the Philly. American Bikini, who's also in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies. Yeah, and and uh, um, in his maiden win, he wasn't the favorite, but he was also a pretty short price, as I recall. Yeah. Number 10, Chancer McPatrick. If we see this fast pace with a lot of horses involved early, where, where are we? there he is, number 10. You have to look pretty far back on this time form U.S. pace projector to find good old Chancer McPatrick. He's done nothing wrong. Oops, wrong race. He's done nothing wrong in three races, Matt. He's the only horse in the field with two grade one wins. If the pace is contentious and fast, it only helps Chancellor McPatrick's chances. Yeah, absolutely. He is uh, He is and has been a legitimate deep closer in his start. Uh, but interestingly, he's not a horse that has trouble in the starting gate or comes out of the starting gate slowly. He breaks out of the gate very alertly, you know, in the, you know, with the first horses uh, out of the gate, but then just kind of eases his way back. Not, not necessarily at the jockey's behest, but just kind of loafs along in the early going. And then when he uh, uh, is asked to run, he has come fast. So I'm not sure if we are going to keep on seeing Chancellor McPatrick get so far behind. I would assume in the mornings, maybe they have been working on that a little bit. Yeah, although being a little bit far behind, or as the projector says clearly last early, might not be a bad spot. Again, if this pace, if pace is fast, like it's being projected to be. Um, Chancellor McPatrick, really good, two different tracks, three different races. He's never been two turns before, but uh, he looks like he should get him. Yeah. Chad Brown has had some really good-looking young horses who came from way back the last few years. Zandon, Sierra Leone, 
remains to be seen on the, 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 the latter. The former never could get it done at the highest level. Um, it'll be interesting to see about Chancellor McPatrick, although he is certainly the most precocious of the list that I just read and, and certainly a horse to fear here in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. All right, Matt, we're going to get to our suggested wagers. We're going to bring some other races into play. So we're going to talk about those races just a little bit as we talk about why we like. I'm the only one with a bet on Friday, so I'll go first with my Friday bet. I'm going to keep it pretty simple for, for some of these bets, including my Friday bet. I, I'm going with Jonathan's way. I, I believe that he can sit a stalking trip, and I think he's the best horse in here, although it's hard to say that with the likes of who he's going against. I'm going to try one with Jonathan's way anyway, and that'll be a $10 two-day two day daily double, Breeders' Cup Juvenile Friday, Breeders' Cup Classic on Saturday. $10, Jonathan's way. That's my single in the juvenile, going with my top four in the classic, hoping to get some odds there. Forever Young, Arthur's Ride, Sierra Leone, and Newgate. That's a $40 bet. Matt, why don't you go next? We'll see you have a Saturday bet. What's your first Saturday bet? Yeah, Brian, uh, my Saturday wagers, I am going with uh, horizontal wagers, two of the special uh, uh, pick fours, and the uh, middle pick five. I uh, have. Uh, turned into almost strictly a uh, horizontal player this past year uh, with pick fives uh, primarily and pick fours. So that's where I, that's where my wagers are. Uh, the middle pick five on Saturday starts, uh, starts with race four. And uh, uh, this one uh, is, uh, is built around Thorpedo Anna in the distaff as a single uh, um and i will single torpedo anna in another one later on so uh, uh with the uh with the philly and mare sprint starting it off uh and the uh turf sprint then torpedo anna moving on to the breeders cup turf and the classic, the classic. I am using five because uh, uh, I I cannot pick a horse to win that race as confidently as you have done with Forever Young. Well, I went four deep in, in the classic, and it looks like you went five deep. Yeah, I do think the classic is is a wide open races uh, as well, Matt. So that's your first pick four there, or pick five there, starting with race four. Excuse me. I see you have society. And Cogburn, I think society is the speed of the speed. She's my top pick there in the Breeders' Cup Philly and Mare Sprint as well. Let's go back to my bets again, keeping it a little bit more simple than Matt. Uh, I, I too think Torpedo Anna is a very likely winner on Saturday in the Breeders' Cup Distaff, and I think she probably goes to the lead now without idiomatic and and see. Uh, it'll be a question to see if anybody can stay with her early and beat her late. I like her chances. She'll be heavily favored, though, of course. I just went with a couple straight daily doubles. Distaff to turf. These are consecutive races on Saturday. Uh, I think Re Rebels Romance is also the horse to beat in the turf, so that's not going to be a big double, but I bet 20 on that. And then my uh, little bit of a long shot in the turf. I think the one that could beat Rebels Romance, the one I like second best, certainly, in the turf, is Shariar from Japan, who ran a very good race last year. So that'll be a $20 double torpedo Anna with those two horses in the turf. Matt, we'll go right back to you for, I believe it was a pick four. Yeah, pick four for your second ticket. Yeah, it's the all turf pick four. I think I hit this uh, uh, wager last year, as I recall. All turf, beginning with race five, Beginning with the turf sprint, going ne going then in odd races after that, races 5, 7, 9, and 11. In this wager, I am singling Cogburn. Cogburn. I didn't single him in the, uh, uh, in the pick five that started off my wagers. That's because I had Torpedo Anna in there. But I'm singling Cogburn in here and then spreading a good bit more on those uh, 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 turf races on the rest of the card, yet it only turns out to be a $30 wager. Yeah, and, and I see in the Philly Mare Turf, you have a couple I like, Warlike Goddess and Moira. Both of them, I think, will run their race in the Philly Mare Turf. I would 
I would warn our viewers to not sleep on content in the uh, Philly mayor turf. I think she wants it firm, and, and I think she is a danger there in the Philly and mayor turf. But that's a, uh, a pretty good looking pick four for Matt, his second wager. My final wager, suggested wager, will be a little bit more uh, you know, going for uh, the gusto here. I'm, I'm going to do a uh, pair of pick threes, and th these pick threes are exactly the same in that in the sprint, I have the top three. I think I think there can be some rally in the sprint this year with all that speed. Mulliken, Remake, and Nakatomi for me in the sprint. And in the dirt mile, it's a tough race, but I love my odds on the three horses I actually like best. Mufasa from Chile, host time uh, to rally the Son of Frosted in the Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile. And then I think Seize the Gray is better than ever. Who would have figured a horse can race all year and, and still be peaking at the end of the year? But I think Seize the Gray is. I think he's got a big shot, and I like his morning line odds. So I'm using those three in the sprint and the Dirt Mile. I have a $5 pick three singling Porta Fortuna as my uh, top pick in the Breeders' Cup Mile. By the way, these are the last three Breeders' Cup races on Saturday. And then if Porta Futuna doesn't win, I'm going to go with the rallier. 20 to 1 on the morning line. I don't know if we'll get 20 to 1 on more than looks in the Breeders' Cup mile, but I think he'll be flying late. And there is going to be some speed in the Breeders' Cup mile. So I like him a little bit. That's a $2 pick three. Again, the same three horses in the sprint to start it and the dirt mile to finish it. I think a lot of people would like to see seize the gray win that dirt mile man yeah uh, uh i uh i am using seize the gray in uh in my last wager also brian and you said who would have thunk that a horse could uh, uh be good earlier in the year and be good late in the year well of course brian d way lucas would be uh somebody that would do that kind of thinking my last pick four is the all dirt pick four it is similar to the all turf except dirt starting in race six and then going in uh, even numbered races six, eight, 10, 12, including the uh, distaff with Torpedo Anna, um, including the classic where I've got those same five horses uh, uh, to use, including the uh, uh, sprint and including the dirt mile where i've got four horses again with that single of torpedo anna and then a lot of coverage in the other three races it's only a 30 dollars ticket yeah yeah torpedo anna um you know three to five in the distaff and i i think the most dangerous horse for is the undefeated awesome result from japan you see a lot of similar horses used in matt's ticket as my ticket but you also see a lot of other horses that one of us likes and the other one doesn't like a lot of these races i think will be determined uh by the pace how this pace plays out and how the jockeys uh jockey for position if you will i also folks uh, this is hard for us to convey on horse center uh days ahead of time but uh, i also do look at the horses in the post parade and see how good they look to uh, kind of make some final decisions in these races that aren't multi-race wagers obviously uh, you can only do that for the first race clearly let me get a parting shot from you on our breeders cup show now lots going on here uh enjoy the world championships coming up uh, uh on friday and saturday hope you cash some tickets you can use ours just as they uh, are presented uh in the graphics or use them as a uh, template and certainly you can go back and look at the other three uh, uh, editions of horse center where we have talked about the breeders cup absolutely well done matt let's also mention super screener uh mike shuddy does a really good job crunching data from all the previous breeders cups and really looking at these horses and who fits that criteria the best both for horses that are likely winners but also long shots that will hit the board so check out the super screener you can get your copy uh now of course and uh, really understand uh horses a through x or a through z in the breeders cup also thanks to uh, candace curtis in the home office for the race graphics timeform us for their pace projections and our sponsor derby which is the best contest site out there 
Good luck. We're finally here. Breeders' Cup, 14 races. Keep swinging if you don't win early. You got five on Friday, four, uh, nine on Saturday. Enjoy. Good luck. Matt and I both hope you win big at the Breeders' Cup. We'll see you next week right here at Horse Center to talk about everything that went down. Good luck, folks.